Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I know you have heard in the news by now that Jonathan Majors was found guilty on two of the charges. And it seems like these are lesser charges, but nonetheless, he was found guilty on two of the charges. After the disclaimer, I want you to take a look at the video and then let me know what you think. And I'm Terry Moran. We've got some breaking news. The jury in the Jonathan Majors domestic violence trial has found him guilty of one count of assault and one count of harassment, but acquitted him of another count of assaulting his former girlfriend. This comes after jurors spent four or five hours deliberating over portions of several days. And this is a case that has gotten a lot of attention. Jonathan Majors, a major rising star, uh, and he, he met... You know, a crisis in this, and the jury has now returned with his verdict. And there was a lot of talk about this uh, trial impacting his future in the movie business. Rising star within the Marvel movies. Uh, our legal contributor, Brian Buckmeyer, has been following uh, this from the very beginning as well. So I guess let's first of all talk about the charges here, uh, Brian, your first reaction. Yeah, I'm actually kind of scratching my head just because I'm looking at the different charges and, and let me break it down and explain. There are two different assaults here. One is intentional assault and one is reckless assault. Uh, based on the number order that they're telling us, my guess, and, and please someone correct me if I'm wrong, is they're acquitting him of intentional assault but finding him guilty of reckless assault, meaning that he just did something he should have known um, better and it, it caused the injury of Grace Jabari. Then he's found not guilty of aggravated assault, which is to alarm, annoy, harass, or threaten someone and subject them to physical violence. Uh, but he's not guilty of that, but he is guilty of alarming and annoying uh, Grace Jabari. To me, this sounds like a, we call it a King Solomon decision. It's, they literally just split the baby and said half and half, but some of the convictions and some of the acquittals don't really make sense when you put them all together. Well, Brian, let, let, me, let me try to make a little sense. I wonder, I don't know the exact fact pattern since I wasn't in the courtroom, but couldn't you say that in, in the fury of what is a domestic dispute, he was reckless in his handling, in his, uh, his physical handling of, uh, of uh, Jabari, and that, was, uh, and that was the reckless assault. And the harassment is he lost his temper rather than consciously went after went after her. Does that make sense? No, because it would make sense for the reckless and then the aggravated harassment, because the aggravated harassment is harassing someone through physical violence. So why find him guilty of assaulting recklessly, but not guilty of harassing someone through physical force? That's that's the part that I'm thinking someone just kind of said, you know what, we find him guilty for two, but not guilty for these two. But it, it, it could work. It, the, someone's got to talk to the jury, I guess. Yeah. Let's talk about the, the evidence, um, because there was clearly a clashing narrative from both sides. Uh, we had video, audio, text, photos. Do we have that uh, uh, video? Okay, this is um, some of the photos that we had here of, of the, the bruises and the cuts. This is the video that I'm talking about. I mean, this was probably one of the most powerful pieces of the evidence that they played in court, Brian. Absolutely. And, and I was in court watching some of this video being played to the jury, and I think it was difficult for both the uh, prosecution and the defense to really articulate this video in a way that really moved the jury. And I think ultimately the jury kind of took this case into their own hands. We saw from the jury notes saying we want all the evidence, pretty much video, testimony, 911 calls, and they decided for themselves. For me, is this Jonathan Majors assaulting his then girlfriend, then running away, or is this him trying to stop her from stealing, or I guess re-stealing his cell phone and getting away from her? Uh, the the juxtaposition of how this was presented to the jury, I think, is what caused uh, the deliberation to take so long. Remember this guy, Cuba Gooding Jr. He was found guilty, or actually, he was able to plea to the case when he was charged. I would like to hear your thoughts on this and let me know if you see any similarities in these two cases, even though he was found guilty or charged with forcibly kissing someone. And then you know about Diddy recently, he was charged or actually a case was filed on him by Cassie. And within 24 hours, the case was settled out of court with both of them saying that they had reached an amicable decision on the case and decided not to pursue it in court. I'd like to hear what you think is similar about these cases, if anything, and what do you think Jonathan meant by saying the woman who is white should act like two black women? 
That just seems foul to me, but I like to hear what you think about that. So as I end this video, remember to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.